Okay, so we're back. Um, it's two days before the uh, test in the Mombela Stadium. The finale of the Castle Lager. The Castle Lager. It is the Castle Lager. Well, not the Castle Lager Rugby Championship. Yeah, no. Castle Lager, yeah. Castle Lager Rugby Championship. Castle Lager Rugby Championship. It's South Africa against Argentina. The finale. Not, not often you don't see the All Blacks challenging for a uh, trophy. But uh, it's, it's quite, quite interesting to... And the Pumas, and it gives us game a bit of spice where we probably thought this wouldn't have had much spice. Yeah, I, I think I said it to you at the end of our last little interview earlier in the week after, I think it was the morning after um, the game in San Diego. I said that it sounds terribly unpatriotic, but in a way I was pleased that the, look, the more I think about it, the less pleased I am. We really didn't, des- uh, we really shouldn't have lost that game. I mean, I, I was going to say we didn't deserve to lose. We did deserve, uh, Springboks did deserve to lose. But uh, really, it wasn't a game that that a world champion team should 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 be losing. Um, those four tries given away in that in such quick time, you know, was to me a, 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 a glaring sort of error on on the part of the box. Um, and some of them were quite bad defensive errors. But to go back to what you're saying, um, it is nice having something on this last game. Uh, it would have also been a great great to come here, sort of knowing that it was just going to be a celebration. But uh, I fancy then the box might. But yeah, I, th- I think Rusty does 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 sort of welcome this sort of situation. He likes that he likes the players to be under pressure. You don't learn anything by playing ten games against Portugal, um, or or ten games against the Argentinian side of, of the past. You play uh, ten, you play a couple of games against against top opposition and uh, t- teams that that have beaten you before, and you've got something on the line. That's that's how good players um, prove that they belong at the, at the highest level. Yeah, I think I think it's 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 you could feel it around being around the. Uh... Uh, the city in Elspray uh, the whole week, you could feel the sort of, it feels like an old school test match. It feels like the whole sort of town, city, city, it's not a town, uh, is, is sort of coming together for this. There's a lot of excitement around it. Sold out, it's the first time Argentina have ever sold out uh, in South Africa in, okay. in, the, in the modern era. I didn't know that. Um, which is, and I'm not sure they ever sold out in the, they might have somewhere in the eighties or something like that, which when we didn't have international sport. We, yes, yeah. When, uh, they, when they came here as the Jaguars, I remember yeah. one of my first p- t- test matches I ever went to. In fact, probably the first test match because I'd been to All Black games against the Tala uh, at Kings Park. They played the Jaguars in in Durban in nineteen eighty, and uh, that that was definitely a set out. Yeah. So in the modern era, it's the first time that they they've sold out. So that's great news. Uh, yeah. Just the King this week, there's been a lot of reaction. I felt the reaction, the fan reaction, which is understand. I understand people don't like Springboks losing, but I felt some of it was a bit overboard. We're talking about a team that's gone unbeaten in the rugby championship until last week, and then lost by one point with the last kick of the game. Uh, it's hardly the the eras of the past, uh, you know, when they when they lost fifty seven nil or anything like that. Uh, but I suppose in the context of this team, it just shows you how high the standards on it and what the expectations are from fans. Well, 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 it is the thing now that you know when you when you when you're a successful team, you build up expectations, and you don't expect them to lose now. And I think the All Blacks had it. It's one of the reasons that the All Blacks are still overreact. I mean, I still think that they overreacted to two Test defeats against against the box is because they're used to that culture of the, of, of success. And and I think South Africans they don't want to give ammunition because we always know that there's people out there who who don't like the Springboks and. I must say that our old mate Stephen Jones, who I really rate as a journalist, but uh, he does sometimes think that he's got uh, don't appear to have something in for the box. He was at it again, I think, the day before yesterday or yesterday, um, talking about how it was great was the Pumas were challenging the All Blacks and the Springboks. Let's see them beat the win games more consistently against the Springboks before we start talking about them challenging. Um, I think that uh, this this was the the one that the what the, the game in San Diego, the one that the box lost last week. Was the first time the box have lost Santiago, since not Santiago, oh, Santiago, not in America, yeah, not, in, not, not in the United States. But um, it was uh, it was it was the first game that the box have lost to Argentina since they became world champions in 2019. And I think subsequent to 2019, uh, Springbok rugby has taken a step up, but both in 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 the quality of the of their rugby, in the depth of our game, and also in the status of the the in their expectations. Uh, the last time Rossi, pr- prior to San Diego, um, the, the previous time that Rossi lost to them was was that in his very, very first season where he was fooling around with the selections because he was trying to get everything right, I think, for the All Blacks, if I remember correctly. So uh, things have um, uh, things have changed since then. So so that's why um, there maybe was a bit of a re- overreaction. Um, but uh, and and it's understandable. I mean, we we don't we don't want the box to lose. I, I was I was I was more disappointed, to be honest, with the with the second test against Ireland, 
because that was a game where we really need to make, we know that we're better than Argentina. I mean, I expect the box to win. We're going to talk about this later, but I expect the box to win comfortably on Saturday. Um, but against, against Ireland, there was a lot to prove because they'd beaten us so many times in a row. And we know the Irish people think their teams are world champions. So that game in Durban where we threw it away in the last 20 minutes of that game, our game management was terrible in the last 10 minutes of that game. I was, I was far more upset about that game just because it was like sort of the unofficial world championship. And in the end, Ireland left here having drawn the series one all rather than being having taught a lesson, which I thought was going to happen. Well, well I, I think they are number one in the world rankings now again after the loss last week, which makes a bit of a mockery of, of that loss because um, of the world rankings, should I say, because, I mean, yeah, it's one loss. And Ireland will lose games in the Six Nations here and there. Uh, so I just find it quite bizarre that. But uh, I don't even know that. That's yeah, ridiculous. That's yeah. That's ridiculous. How does that, how did that well, come about? If we apparently lose, we lose points. because It's Argentina because the, the people don't rate Argentina that highly. Yeah, they Argentina would give Ireland a good go. Like the, they, they beat France. They beat France and Argentina not that long yeah. ago. The thing with Argentina, though, is, is you talk about consistency has been their biggest problem. Even this season, I mean, they had that wonderful win over the All Blacks at Wellington, and the next week got pumped. And yeah. um, so, so that's the big thing. They lost their first game against Australia. Mm. And then turned it on in the second well, game. So. Well, every time a team a team that's more highly rated than them uh, has to respond after a poor performance against Argentina, they do. Uh, South Africa have done it historically. New Zealand have done it a couple of because they responded. They'd lost in New Zealand, uh, I think, two years ago as well, and they responded and won quite well the following week. So, so that to me is uh, is is a, is a is a growing sort of step that, uh, that that that's a step that that Argentina have to take. But Tommy, you were you were here this week. I know that the box spoke about um, the area where New, where Argentina has has improved, and and I have been looking at that. And I mean, it's just quite phenomenal that they that they our, our discipline. We've got areas that we need to improve, and one of them is discipline. I mean, we just have way too many cards. Um, they've been cards in just about every game. Yeah. Whereas Argentina haven't had a card in, I think, the last 12 games. Yeah, I mean, it goes back. I mean, even thinking that game in Brisbane where the, where the box were 30 points up and, and uh, yeah, they had two other cards right in the last 10 minutes and it allowed Australia, Australia to score. Uh, there has been mm. disciplinary problems. It ha is an issue. And although they, they're good enough to scramble and scrap and win, and guess, even against the All Blacks, yeah, with the All Blacks got cards, they, they sort of turned it in the box favor. Their play hasn't been great overall. There's been areas in mm. every game that you can pinpoint. But on your point about Argentina, they haven't had a single card in this mm. rugby championship, which is surprising because that's normally part of their downfall in, in most games is, and, and, and I say that with knowing that Thomas Lovanini yeah. is back in the team <laughs> yeah. and he's the yellow card merchant. Yeah, uh, so I'll tell you what, they'll get one on Saturday. But uh, yeah, he, he certainly is, uh, is a borderline player, a great player, but sometimes crosses that line too too quickly. Uh, but yeah, they, they've been brilliant in terms of, 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 of that discipline. And that's somewhere the, this Bok team need, still needs to go. So I, yeah, our friend of ours, John Cardinelli, did a story the other day about how many of this Bok team are going to be too old mm. or um, mm. 35 plus mm. by the next World Cup. And and it's, an, it's a really interesting one. And, he made, made the point there um, that the box have got 30, 33, 34 tests before a World Cup. Yeah. yeah and yeah. if you think that's not a lot of time, no. especially when you started with players who had their first test of the season, yeah. Sasha, those type of guys. Uh, so you need to use these opportunities and those selections are going to bite you sometime. And I thought they bit them last week. Well, I, I mean, a lot of people talk to me about Rossi being a genius and being brave and being bold and, and taking gambles. I don't actually necessarily see it that way. In fact, I don't necessarily see it. I don't need to qualify it. I don't see it that way. It's like Sasha's, Sasha's selection. Uh, people are sort of saying, well, geez, that's a, bro that's a bold decision. And it's, and it's a stroke. Some, somebody said to me, it's a stroke of genius on his part because... I don't think he's got a choice. We need we need three flower halves. And if 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 Sasha, sorry, not Sasha, um, Marnie, um, was thrown away after that game last week, when do you bring him back? Yeah. Because uh, you know, imagine that we we get to uh, Twickenham in November and both Andre and Sasha are injured, which could happen. Um, who, who, who's the next next cab off yeah. the rank? It's 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 Marnie. And then Russi has to sit there in front of the media and say, I rate I rate uh, Marnie, and now we have full confidence in him. Whereas we would know that he doesn't because he's dropped him after after one miss in in Argentina, yeah. and and uh, uh, it, when it comes to him changing up selections, he also doesn't have an option. He he has got whether we like it or not, he has got a very old team. 
And if you've got a very old team, you can't expect, I know that all the players say, I mean, I, we did it into, well, it wasn't actually this week, but I was looking at a YouTube interview with, with Damien Delendi before the um, game in Cape Town against the All Blacks. And, and I was part of the, an interview with, with Jesse Creel a couple of weeks before that. And 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 those guys all sort of are, are quite convinced that they could still be around in a couple of years' time. But you I mean, we're only going to know that when it, when when that okay. time arrives. And it would actually be a dereliction of duty on Rossi's part, given the depth of talent we have in this country. I mean, if we were another nation and we didn't have any depth, then I'd say, listen, just play these guys until they die. Yeah. But we don't have that. We don't have that excuse. I was going to say you know, talk about the flaws, and 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 I mean, I had the conversation. With a couple of people this week about about who's the next guy's draw because obviously yeah. everyone's talking about Marnie, uh, but if not Marnie, who's the next guy? And Jordan Hendricks's name comes up because obviously his Curry Cup final kick that everybody watched and a brilliant kick. For him. Except he played fullback there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and but then you think to yourself, he's had one test. Yeah. So unless you're going to put him in now and play him for the next twenty odd tests. Where's he going to get a chance there? And yeah. I, I, I reckon he will get a chance on the end of the year tour. But you're going to have a situation where you're going to have guys with 10, 15 caps going into that World Cup. And, and, and it's actually, Jordan is an excellent example because if you go back and watch that test against Wales, I mean, it's not like I'm going to do that because it wasn't like the most memorable game, mm. but I've got a very good memory of that game. It was the same day as you were at Loftus for the, to, for the URC final. He was actually very nervous mm. in that first test. So he he does need another run at some point to when when he's got less nerves. Uh, you know we talk about Marnie missing kicks. I mean he missed kicks in that game. It was Sasha who came on and nailed that long kick. I yeah. mean like, he was the guy who showed n nerves of steel. Uh, but but uh, uh, you know I think when I wrote the match report of that game, I I, I think I mentioned a, a nervy performance from Jordan Hendricks. And the only reason, reason the way you're going to uh, get rid of those nerves, or alternatively whether the coaches are going to find out whether it's nerves or you just don't belong at that level is actually to play. Yeah. And, and, and Rossi has to do that. And, and John's quite right. You know, I actually written, I think I, for one of my business day columns earlier in the year, I, I, I counted the number of tests uh, that were left. It's, it's not a lot. Everybody thinks four years, four years isn't a lot. No. Um, and in 2027 is going to be here before you know it. And you don't want a fly half like Marnie was at the last world cup who had played 10 or 11 tests by the time the world cup arrives, you want the fly halves, the fly halves that are going to be required and Andre could be injured or too old. Um, Sasha could be injured. He's a very physical player. I think he's going to get injured a lot in his career. Um, and then, of course, there's a, you actually, sorry, I'm, I'm sort of completely, it just suddenly came into my brain now. You mentioned the fourth fly half. The fourth fly half probably isn't Jordan. It's probably actually Damien Willemser. So I think if you speak right? to I think if you speak to Rossi, he'll probably tell you that Damien but, Willems but is the next throw, guy. And I want to throw in another another spanner in that works. Then you'll have uh, Sharks fans saying, "What about Sia Masuku?" And yeah, you know, the, the point I'm making, and and this is not disparaging any of those guys, but there is a picking order, and there well, there is only limited time and limited tests, and some way somebody's going to lose out, and and it's always unfortunate because we've got a lot of talent in our country, but. That's precisely the the thing. There's there's not enough tests to give everybody a decent run. And obviously the caveat to that is as well, you have to win still. Yeah. So spring, people want the Springboks to win. They want they want the results to stay the same. And and to do that, you can't just throw all the experienced players out. And that jigsaw puzzle is difficult. Well, on Siamasuku, the URC starts, well, it started last week, but it actually starts the Vodacom United Rugby Championship starts for the South African teams tomorrow. So let's see Sia Masuku get a proper run there before we start talking about whether he's a Springbok or not. You know, I, I, I don't know if John Plumtree thinks that he's an international player. Um, yeah, he, I think he rates Jordan as well, but uh, I think um, uh, I think some of the rest of the coaches actually think, um, and talking about David Williams and company, also also are, uh, I believe that Jordan is is probably a, a better fly half than he is a fullback, but they're giving him a run at fullback to see how he goes there. Remembering too, of course, that the Sharks have Athalele Fassi. So, mm -hmm. so Jordan might well ha end up having to move back to flower half. I think that they will probably choose him ahead of Masuku when that time comes. My money says that. Um, I think that Jordan Hendricks is, is a better flower half than, than Sia Masuku. Mas Sia Masuku is a very good guy to have in your books and he, he kicks well under pressure and so forth. But I'm, I'm not sure having lost, have watched the last couple of games of the Curry Cup, I'm not sure he has quite the sort of stamp on the game that some of the other flow halves we're talking about. And that includes, includes Marnie. But he's also, I mean, he can still develop as well. Yeah, he's 27, so, eh? Yeah. But okay, let's turn to, to obviously we're talking about the celebration in, 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 in uh, this weekend's game. 
the big celebration, which they will be win or lose, and obviously bigger if they win, is Evan Ezra becoming the most capped Springbok of all time. Uh, yeah, he's certainly been a servant of Springbok rugby and uh, quite a, quite a, I've said it before as well, quite a different guy from away from the field than you see on the field. Uh, he's he's a, a very interesting person mm. and, and often, you know, sort of because he's so aggressive on the field, played with that line, but... Yeah, I, I think Evan's been a great, uh, a great servant for South African rugby, and he's part of. And I think that he's said enough. But he's part of this golden generation because this is a golden generation. If you think of the, the Rusty the other day, the first four guys he signed was Ian, uh, Franz Molhaber, well, and and Stephen Kitzel, and, 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 and all at the Western Province yeah, Academy. It's, and, uh, and and Damien Delendi is part of that under nineteen. He wasn't at the academy, but he was part of that nineteen team. He was still at the school. I don't know if you read my piece and supersport.com. Um, he was part of um, the, the, the Western Province under-19 team because Western Province school selected ignored him. Uh, Damien didn't play Craven Week, so the coach of, of, of Milnerton, um, Hunt Martin, took to the Nazian Adams, the under-19 coach at the time, and said, listen, please look at this guy. He's been ignored by Western Province school selectors. I think that he's a good player. Give him a chance, and he went and he played a trial game, and then he ended up playing every Western Province under. And so, so he wasn't part of that academy. He wasn't signed by Rassi then, but he was part of the under nineteen team that represented yeah. the academy. So he was in with with Sia and with Franz Motta, with Stephen Kitsoff, with Urban, and uh, with uh, I was trying to there's another Scarra and Tabini. Okay, he never went on to become a great, player, but Scarra was also was also part of that group, and Kai actually. Was also was also part of that, if I remember correctly. So, so the, the, it was a, it was a golden generation in and problems. The first time I came across Ivan Etzebeth, um, it was was quite interesting because I, he had Varsity Cup rugby, but at that stage I watched. I sort of I sometimes get in Varsity Cup rugby, and then times I don't. And I always just sort of feel that there's too many geeks and things in, in Varsity Cup rugby. I find it much of a traditionalist. I mean, it tries all thirty five points. It, be it can't be sort of more points because they've started off the genesis of the movement started off through the back mm. of the field that doesn't make sense so so i struggle with with what rugby but he'd obviously played for uct at that point uh if but i was actually an, uh, um, a great legend in fact the man he's overtaking to that's the um uh, victor matt visit his, vic, his book, book launch in cape town you remember that him and during yes. the old board shot book i think it was in 2007 it was actually the year that, that, that I did Peter de Villiers. Um, uh, and, and I was at Victor's uh, uh, book launch. So if I remember correctly, it was at the one and only in Cape Town. And he had this guy, this this really strong looking guy with him. And I didn't know who he was, a young guy. And I thought, he should, and, so, and I said, ask somebody, I said, who is is that? And they said, no, it's Evan Etzebeth. And of course I knew the name because the Etzebeth are legendary, are legends in Cape Town. Uh, a very tough family that he comes from. And also very good at ring as well. But, and I remember somebody said, no, he's one of his the Etzebeths. And I think Victor at the time was, well, had spent the day with him. I think he was trying to get him to the balls. I think Victor probably recognized that there was a great talent coming out. That has been proved mm. because tomorrow, Evan's going to overtake his record. Well, that's the thing. I mean, just think, I mean, Evan looks like he's still playing another couple of years. Of course, he should be managed. And, and but yeah, he easily make it to another World Cup. And that's one of the guys I would hope makes it to another Cup. Uh, because if you look the lock stocks at the moment, it's four lock. There's not many. I mean, Solomon's the next guy, but there's behind him, there's not too many. There's a couple of youngsters coming through, but again, same same thing as we they're not getting tests at the moment. You've given me an opening here to talk about Solomon, actually, because um, I know that there, there's some people still still knocking Solomon after last week's game. And I watched, read I, the watched comments, I, read care. I watched, I watched that game again, the, the, the San Diego game. And you watch the, you're, you've got to always remember what of game the box are playing on a given day and everybody's like expecting um man to be this big carrier even etzebeth that they expect him to be like this aggressive guy who's going to charge in position and on days he's that but if you watch the role that he played last week's game he's obviously really good soft skills because remember the springboks were from all over the place and so designated carriers so the designated carriers were my run nuki was was carrying quite a lot of the guy who's carrying the Probably was was you know, Jasper, Jasper Visa and Malta. They had those guys as fair. So so but Solomon wasn't actually operating the carry in that game. He was standing there. I mean, it was a ball. Like he would be, he'd get the ball, and then like he'd be the guy who'd either turn it that way or turn it that way. He's almost like a, a sort of fly half receiver. 
I mean, that was the role that he was playing in that game. Like, like Damien Delendi at one stage was criticized by everybody because people said he can't pass. He just runs the ball up. But that game that, he, that the Springbok was playing at that time, uh, particularly at that World Cup under Heineke, where um, after the defeat to, to Jim Brighton, it was understandable that Heineke sort of gone, almost got a bit spooked. So we went ultra conservative. But it wasn't just Damien who took the ball up. It was almost like Skulk played flower. Half, half that world, Skulk, Skulk, um, Berger, I'm talking yeah. about. Remember, he took the ball up, took the ball up. And you would think that Damien doesn't have a pass, but we all know that Damien does have a pass. Yeah. Ask him to play a different game, and he will. So, and that's the story with which on as well. He wasn't actually designated. He didn't look like he was a designated. He came on later on, and he actually ended up playing with, with Eben, and he carried a then in, the, in those last few minutes, but in that first part of the game, this was this was this was Solomon's role, like you know, getting the ball and he'd either bring in, he'd bring in this guy, he'd bring in that guy, like some direction. It was almost like he was the fulcrum of 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 directing the traffic, if you like, if, if you like. So, back, yeah. so 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 criticism of Solomon of after last week because oh we didn't see him, we didn't see him be the traditional the full. No, he didn't, but clearly that wasn't the plan. Yeah. I think this is my whole that is is. Team in our careers, players who slowly, who, who mm. take a while, to good spring box, who, who sort of show at certain times, and, when, and the coaches know this. And and I feel just on the bottom line, Rossi and them have earned the right oh, yeah, to know what they do. And and I think I said it to you the other day in the conversation, I said it, rem it reminds me a little bit about the C right at the start of Sears' career as well. Mm. Also, not the most cheap player. Uh, he also, there was also. So, I, I, think Solomon, I think Solomon is flashier and what I'm talking to you about just now he actually, yeah. he actually look, he look at his ball skills for a lock he's got amazing ball skills I mean um, if I think of a lock with great ball skills then I would think of Arceus Neyman I think that guy's the, they've got the best skills of a lock in the world outside of the Kiwis the Kiwis have great 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 forwards that have low. and the other guy who's actually got good ball skills funnily enough and it may be because he was also coached by John Mitchell for his two of the Bulls was actually Lord Diago and yeah, no, that's good great ball skills and both with these ultra long arms, oh, that's yeah. the other thing you yeah. get to ball, ball away. Um, yeah, this weekend is quickly at the selections, other than Marnie. Wait, we talk about Marnie too. Yeah, no, but other I mean, to me, there's no debate. I mean, it, the, the, Yarassi is, is 100% correct to to retain Marnie. Yeah. Uh, Look, I agree with that because I think the best thing, and Rossi made it quite clear, but to get back from the horse, and I, I, no. I agree totally with that because I you made the point. It's not like we, we've other guys at the moment, and he is our third flower. To back. And he's world class. And, he, and as, as a fly half, as a half, not as a kicker, as a fly half, is actually international class. Yeah. He is a very good fly half. He's played, I counted it, I think it, I think he's played 60 minutes this year. He played for the first 40 minutes again to go. And then I think he played, did he play 20 or 30 last? Didn't play very long last yeah. week. So he's played 70 minutes. You, you, it's, it's very difficult to get up your momentum when you've played so little. Yeah. His, his tactical kicking was very good last week. I went back and looked at it. Yeah. Um, and, and I mean, the, as, a, as we spoke on Sunday, and that um, his first kick was actually more difficult than the one he missed. Yeah. And, and to me, so I, I agree, he hasn't had a lot of chance. Uh, and I think just other thing that people also, a lot of times, and we've seen it so many times in Springbok teams in the past, we, we, a coach loses a change room where, where, where something like that happens where the first sign of weakness, a coach panics mm. and, and he, he throws the player out, et cetera, yeah. and, and then he starts losing the change room because then the other players say, well, if it can happen to him, if I have one bad game, on God. Now, I know people are going to say, yeah, but you you play for the jersey and you have to play your best game, but we're all human. The yeah. Players are human. They have those. And players get backed by coaches. And players play with confidence because they get backed. Yeah. So in in that respect, I think it's a great decision of Marnie. Plus, they said they're going to have uh, backup for him. Yeah. So uh, Cheslin and Jaden have both been kicking yeah. at practice. Yeah. Uh, you know, whether you know, why, why don't why don't they actually give Damien a chance to kick? Because I was talking to a school's coach yesterday, and he was talking about apparently for what did he plays he plays for Wild Nice Panasonic. Yeah. Apparently, he's been kicking goals quite well for them. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. He was a school school at Monaton High. He was a, he was a schoolboy kicker. But um, I mean, when I say school, I mean he was the guy who kicked for post, and apparently he hardly ever missed. So they should actually give him a go at some point. Oh, they should. Oh, well, I, I, but, I mean, but 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 just staying. Yeah, it's just like, maybe you, we'll see. You, you haven't kicked your conversion this weekend on these. Um, well, I mean, why can't a lock kick? I mean, yeah, I mean, this is <laughs> 50th, yours, I mean, I remember. I, I can't remember what the occasion was, but Oli Larue kicking a conversion right at the end of the Shots game many years ago. But uh, you know, the the. The thing with Marnie is that he's just just give the guy an opportunity. I mean, he hasn't played he hasn't played much this year. Um, 
He doesn't, uh, we said it. I mean, I, I don't want to contradict myself. I don't like him as the first choice goal kicker. Um, but having said that, sometimes there are, because there are times when he's, he doesn't miss. I mean, there were times for the Storm, I think he was the top scorer in the URC that year that the, the Storm has won the, won the URC. Um, there are times when he doesn't miss. And I always use the example of, Percy Montgomery is the best example of a player who, who was sprayed it all over the place early in his career. Then later on, he was like a metronome and he was kicking him from all over the place. Ruan Pina, I think we mentioned before. Um, but, you know, to me, it's just, you know, it's Monty, Monty has to play again after, after what happened last week. Um, he does need, he does need another chance to play. And, and I've, I've got a feeling that we'll see him play really well, really well on Saturday. I, I was going to say, I was going to say the selection, I was going to ask about the other selection because they've gone with type in terms of we expect the same, same midfield. We expected the two wingers to be who they are, Chesney and Kirtley. Uh, not surprised up there, they got another shot because he's done well and again, Trying to get a guy to get more and more caps, yeah. um, and, and then Marnie and and of course Jaden. Jaden, I think because of his tactical kicking, he'll take some pressure off Marnie as well. But and then I looked at the, the interesting thing for me was going with the five three bench, mm. and it seems every time we've got a team that wants to try and run us off our feet. Uh, I, I just I, I, I haven't gone to check these stats, so I might be a little bit wrong. But the feeling I have is that then we go we revert to a five three. We don't go for the 6-2 because we, we were a bit worried. And this weekend, Argentina are going to come out and try and score tries. Um, that could be a good or a bad thing for them. Uh, we'll have to see. But I, I do think that that's probably one of the things that influenced the bench. I do think that there's an interesting trend, and, and I think we have discussed this before, with Lacanio, um, repeat, like it looks like they're pushing him at, at 12. Uh, Andre Esthausen, I mean, talking about cards, I mean, since that red card against Portugal, we haven't seen him again. Yeah. And I, I do almost get the feeling that the, the type of rugby that the box are playing, uh, and I'm not saying that, that, that Andre Essayson doesn't have Scott, uh, soft skills anyway, because uh, the guys tons will tell you that when he played for Holly Quinns, he was a great passer of the ball. But uh, in South African rugby, he's, he's often just that traditional South yeah. African guy, the enforcer, who takes the ball up. Like Damien was asked to be in the 2015 World Cup that we were talking about before. Yeah. So, yeah, um, I, I do find, I, I find interesting what, what type of centres, what type of midfields we're putting out now, where we put, where we've got, we've got, when we got the Kanye at 12, it's a very different type of, of, of midfield to, to our traditional sort of South African midfields. And yeah, it's um, it's it's just interesting looking at that at at that box at that box team now. Um, how you you look at when you look at the bench, we don't know what's going to happen on Saturday. Like the opposition won't know, but we also don't know is Andre going to come on at twelve mm -hmm. and and play the rest of the game as a twelve, and then maybe we'll see Litkanya moving into thirteen, his usual position. Uh, there are just so many options uh, open to to Rossi and he can just keep the opposition guessing. Well, the one I find very interesting is is we, we don't have a lock on the bench. And that's yeah. partly because, I, I'm sure part of it is because of the, all the injuries we've got at the yeah. moment. But the other part of it is Elric's going to double up with that. So does Peter Steph go to, to, to lock? Um, mm, he you, probably will. Yeah, and, and that's the, the probable one. But Elric has played lock as well. Uh, he's not the tallest lock, yeah. but you know, he can do it in an emergency. But they obviously feel he's the one player I feel in terms of physicality has stood up in, in this test season. And he's impressed me because I always thought he was a bit at times one dimensional for the Bulls, but he's yeah. really impressed me with, with No, he's impressed me as well. I was I had my I had my doubts about him before the season started. I wouldn't say I had my doubts about Rio Naki. Um I just was I just thought that he'd take a while to develop him. And and he's actually impressed me as well. I think Ruan's also yeah. also making making strides for strides for, strides forward. Yeah, no, look, I mean, Ruan's thing to me, his work rate. You, anybody who watches him at the Bulls knows his work rate is oh, unquestionable. Okay. Um, but I always felt maybe he needs another five or ten kgs on him. He just you're talking about Ruan, now. yeah, okay. absolutely, as um, a lot. And yeah, and you know what? It's one of my big bugbears. We talk about it a lot. We play, we play, we can't play a twelve month twelve month season. And one of the reasons we can't play a 12-month season isn't just because it fatigues the players, but we need a, 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 a period where the guys can condition themselves. Yeah. And he's a player that needs conditioning. Funnily enough, I think that Kane and Moody probably needs a bit of conditioning because he's a guy who can bump players off, but he needs he, he, he put on a couple of extra kilograms of muscle, that guy, and I promise you he'll be South Africa's yeah. uh, Jonah Lomu. Okay, Jonah Lomu's a bit extreme, but he would be that kind of player. Yeah, just interesting, just turning to Argentina's... Um, 
and uh, selection. Uh, seven changes to their starting lineup. They they've they obviously lost Marcus Kramer coming in here, but they they they've dropped Tabla Matera. Uh, with uh, Juan Martin um, Gonzalez, I'll just get this right because there's so many Juan Martins in Argentina and rugby. Uh, the one who plays at Ceres is a flank is in there as well. And then the back, they got Santiago Carreras at fullback, which is interesting. So they got two, both their flowers in the back line. Yeah. Um, so it's it's gonna it's an interesting one. They're obviously looking. They feel that gives them the edge, and they can score tries that way, and they can rack up points that. You, you sort of expect there to be changes, though, when, when you've got a very short uh, turnover uh, change around and you've played one game in, in, in South America and then you're playing the next one. And, and you'll remember that when the All Blacks, because in, in, for, for a long time in the rugby championship, it used to be that the All Blacks would go for their penultimate game, they would go to Argentina, and then they would come here sort of on the way home. And they never played the same teams in, the, in both those games. Even even if the rugby championship was on the line, they never did that. They always made six, seven or eight changes, and and they made a lot of changes. And I mean, normally it would be the the top team that played at Ellis Park, um, and then a sort of changed up team there. But but I think there is something in that. I mean, that you don't, uh, you know, if you're playing if you're playing two games, and and if I was the, the, the Argentinian coach, I'd also think of the emotion of last week. Uh, I think we've seen this season that the emotion of a big win can sometimes rebound on you a, a mm. week later. And if, and if you've got like a, a transatlantic flight on top of all of that, uh, I think I think he's being right wise to have fresh players. The box will have fresh players yeah. on Saturday. I mean, a lot of the guy, I mean, um, the, the Damien Delendi's coach at, at Mullerton was telling me he was at the school uh, the week before last because he had a week off. He wasn't he wasn't in Argentina with the rest of the guys. So they so they fresh and they are hungry. Yeah, and, and, and that's one of the reasons, Rossi also pointed to it this week, that one of the reasons why they did that is because the way the rugby championship works at the moment, they flew back on a charter flight mm -hmm. together, both teams. Um, and he said, yeah, it's not like in the old days where you used to do tri-nations and you used to come back and you'd wait for them. There'd be a week off and then yeah. they'd arrive. Yeah. And so you don't get that advantage of being at home and waiting yeah. for a team anymore. They came with which you. Is, which is a good thing. Yeah. And that's why they've obviously they've players here and they've tried to try to mix it up. I think we'll just get to a prediction. Uh, I think we must, I think I'm going to say happy birthday to you first. Um, so you were talking when you were talking earlier on about Eden Eden Epsabeth. <laughs> you were talking about Eden Epsabeth. You said there's a big celebration. I was thinking, is that the way you talk about your birthday? But I mean, it's today. Of course, it's not on Saturday. Um, Eden's big day is on Saturday. Uh, you, you, your, your, your birthday is tonight. So I hope you have a good time. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, and uh, we'll also have a celebration tonight. We'll definitely have. A, a beer or two, uh, at least, or something. Um, yeah, uh, definitely um, a nice peri peri chicken somewhere. We're close to Mozambique. And there's also a restaurant called yeah, Mozambique. Yeah, we'll, we are, we'll be in the restaurant Mozambique. Not, not. Well, that's. I mean, it's just not far. I mean, go down to Kamati Put and you can cross the border. We could go to Maputo, Maputo tonight. Uh, we might not make it back before the game. That's what worries me. Yeah. And not, not because we think of anything dangerous. I actually, I forgot to bring my passport anyway. So yeah. <laughs> well, there's the reason. Yeah, uh, yeah just a, a prediction. I think. Uh, I, I didn't have a birthday present from West Ham last night. Gavin's very happy. Oh, yes, I've got about 5-1. Five, one. Yeah, five so one to Liverpool. Uh, yeah. One all at half time, though. That's when I stopped following. Uh, I, 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 sort of, I, was, I was watching, so we were sitting in, in the local pub here, the Jock. People know the Jock around here. And I was watching it when it became 2-1 or when they got the red card. Yeah, but then I just I just thought, okay, well, that's it. And but so so hopefully the box can give me a proper present this week. Uh, the, uh, and they will. Um, the box to win by at least 15. Yeah, I think I think the, the I'm not going to interrogate it further. That's that's my thing. At least mark those words. At least fifteen. So if they win by thirty five, it doesn't mean I was wrong. Yeah, I think it's going to be an emphatic victory. I I I then I'm not sure if it's going to be emphatic on the scoreboard, but uh, it'll be it'll be comfortable. But I think it'll be emphatic on the field. I don't think we're going to be sitting there gnawing our nails. And I think I've told you I've got that acid reflux problem, which seems to have miraculously gone in the last couple of days. But I had it in Cape Town, and that whole game. Because uh, that game was just always so close. So they had a camera on you. You've yeah. got funny to watch, but anyway. <laughs> and and the last minutes of the Ellis Park game. Yeah. I mean, when the box came back, and then, uh, yeah, I mean, the, yeah, it, I think I think Saturday is, is going to be a game where it's not going to be squeaky bums bums bum uh, territory. I think we're going to see the box win fairly comfortably, and it and it will be the box. I don't think, uh, you know, uh, we we were wrong. Well, I was wrong earlier in the week. I know in my Super Sport piece, and in fact, when we spoke yeah. last. We were talking about um, points differential and everything, and and obviously it's not points differential. If Argentina win with a bonus point, and they deny South and, Africa. and they deny South Africa, and obviously if they had get a bonus point, it means they've scored more three, three more tries. Yeah. But that's not going to happen. I mean, so well, they've, they've only won in South Africa once, and that was in 2015 in Durban. Yeah, uh, in in 
the, the, all the, all their tests here in South Africa. So, uh, it would have to be a hell of a shakeup for them to win like that. Uh, you could see them maybe even sneaking a win, but you, but I, I can't see, I think what's going to happen is they're going to go out all guns blazing and the box will take control of it. They'll shut that down. So, um, yeah, as I say, comfortable. Yeah. yeah. Here's one thing though, because the one thing we haven't spoken about is we're standing up here. I mean, I got out of the car today. I, like, I came down with, with air conditioning and everything. I was, I, I was in Joburg last night and I came down today. And I got out and I felt like I was in Dubai. I mean, that's how hot, how hot it was. And last week, Karassi sort of used the excuse. Well, one of the things he said was that it was very hot over there. Um, the one team that we, maybe there's two teams that we don't have an advantage on, against in the, in the heat. One would be Argentina. And obviously, if we played Japan, because Japan, uh, I've been yeah. to Japan, they play rugby in some, in some excruciating heat. But every other every other nation we we've got an advantage against this one. The Argentinians we don't. They 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 want minus thirty seven degrees for yeah. the heat here on Saturday, and it's hot. Uh, so if you're coming to Nelspruit, bring a hat, uh, bring lots of uh, liquid refreshment, uh, whatever that form that takes for you, uh, so that you can keep yourself hydrated because that's something mm -hmm. we're going to go do soon. Um, yeah, and let us know your your comments and and your your predictions. Do you think Gavin and I are wrong? Uh, I'm sure you'll tell us in the comments. Uh, and if you haven't already, smash that subscribe button. We'll be back on Sunday uh, analyzing the Bok victory, hopefully. It will be a Bok victory. Yeah. And there's no, I don't have a shadow of a doubt. Well, we'll chat to you then. Cheers.